Here's another video for my series of building and framing this particular type of house. And it's going to have to do with truss ceiling backing. So we got truss roof ceiling backing. It needs to hang or float and uh, it cannot be uh, touching any of the top plates. It's got to be able to move up and down. You'll see more of that later on in this video but uh, it's got to hang basically and here's one here we can look at you can see a board here backing board and this is a backing board and then these boards are attached to this and then these boards of course attach to the trusses allowing it to move when the trusses go up and down so mm -hmm. the framing plates top framing plates wherever they would need to be, wherever they would be in the way of the trusses moving down, need to be smaller. So we have a two by four framing plate over here, two by four framing plates on the end, and usually a one, board, one by four framing plate that would be running perpendicular to the trusses. You can always run, use two by fours in here, as long as a truss isn't going to be sitting on top of it. But most home builders just do put one by fours everywhere just to play it safe. And you can see here where the truss backing here kind of sticks and it's going to sit on top of the roof truss. So we got a one by four here. So if the truss goes down, the backing will go down with it. The two by four is not going to be in the way because the backing for the ceiling at corners is not going to be touching it. It's just going to be floating up and down with the trusses. And if, for those of you wondering how the trusses, what, why they would need to go down, the trusses would settle as more weight is added to it. So you, if you could imagine putting a ceiling up here, insulation, of uh, some type of a forced air heating unit in the attic, or even the roofing materials themselves, tile, stuff like that. This all will force the trusses in some cases to go down. I've actually seen the trusses settle and they sit right on top of the one by four sometimes. And I always wondered about that, if that was going to be a problem for the home. I usually extend the corner out a little bit, uh, two inches, three inches. This just allows for a little more backing um, for the ceiling at the corner. Whether you do that or not will be up to you. And you can eliminate this board here. You know, right now you could hang it. This would be hanging off of the trusses. But realistically, it can be removed and you can attach the ceiling backing to the wall framing. You can either attach it to the block or to the framing. This part right here of the truss is not going to move, or should I say, shouldn't move very much. Here's another form of ceiling backing that I've seen. You could simply block it 24 inches on center, 16 inches on center, something like that. Now this one right here on the other example had a two by four on it. If you were gonna do something like this, this would need to be a one by, one by four. And here we can see they start here and go 24 inches on center. And of course you could equal, equally space them instead of having a situation like this where this is tight. Now, one of the benefits of doing this is it's gonna be a little easier to insulate these areas. Some of the backing that runs parallel to the walls doesn't seem to be as easy to insulate. So I will uh, leave that up to you, whether you do something like this or the other way. Something else you could do would be to put a block at the end like this instead of having it sitting on top of the trusses. This way it would uh, carry the boards. And this actually might be a better way. When I used to do truss roofs, I tried to do this because I was always worried about the nails being pulled out of the backing. And uh, in a few seconds, you'll, you'll understand what I'm talking about. This right here seems to hold everything together a little nicer, put, put a little more structural support in it. Now you are going to have um, truss clips like these, and these will keep the interior walls from moving but I kind of wanted to provide you with an idea of 
how the roof can actually move here. As you can see, the ceiling has dropped a little bit. And zoom in here, and this, this gap has become a little narrower. It should have been three quarters of an inch, but now it's probably more like uh, half of an inch. I'm just going to kind of remove something here to give you an idea what it would look like. I'm going to go back and do it again, give you an idea how the roof truss system can actually settle down. Now it's not going to settle down at the end where it's sitting on top of the walls at the bearing points at the end at each end of the truss, but it is designed to move down a little bit. And uh, of course, again, this is why we would need to have the ceiling backing floating. Let's go ahead and raise it back up. We can see here where it's raised back up again. We don't have much weight on it. Now this right here is just another form of backing. I'm going to go through the house and try and pick up a little speed here throughout the video so that it's not too long. But this is just another way. You can see the same concept here. Here's another method. You could always have the 2x4s flat for a closet. That might be helpful. Again, another method. Always have some other methods. This is what it would look like on the inside. Another method with the block at this end and then the board on top to that would nail down into the ceiling backing. Just another idea, throwing out some few, few methods. And again, the 2x4 here is extending past a little bit at the corner. And then here we have a continuous wall. And I wanted to give you an idea here what the 2x4s on the top would look like. You're kind of wondering how you would attach them. You basically take some 16D nails and drive them down and then the boards, hopefully, for the ceiling backing, will not get pulled down. That's always a concern of mine. I always wondered about that. You nail this stuff in, and uh, the ceiling backing hangs off of hangs off of this. Maybe it puts a little more stress on it somehow and separates here. So you might want to, you know, I, I'm not saying to use screws. A building uh, engineer, inspectors might not want to see that. But screws seem like they would definitely work a little better on something like this than a nail. And you could always use the one by material or two by whatever you are using to equally space and support the trusses to keep them from moving side to side. And uh, you could always just nail attached to those is another method. Now this one right here, I have the two by four cantilevering past. You can see here where the 2x4 is attached to the top. Of this one here and kind of sticking past here and uh, you'd simply nail down and uh, this one here would be supporting the ceiling backing kind of like a cantilever thing as a stick and pass. This method would be useful if you have some type of heating ducts or something in the way where you cannot run something continuous across here. Another view of it there and the final view here where the backing is you can see it without the trusses sitting on top of the top plates so again, the backing needs to float in the center and it can actually be attached to the wall framing plates where the end of the truss is sitting on top of. So anyway, I hope that helps. And uh, don't forget to watch more of the videos about the series about this for framing and designing a three bedroom house. And, uh, and, and I, there is going to be a playlist at the end of the video. Make sure that you check out some of the other videos if you haven't watched them already.